Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another Assassin's Creed Valhalla video, but this time I've actually played Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yes, I got a review code last week from the great people over at Ubisoft Australia, so I've been playing a bunch of Valhalla this week, and I wanted to give you, now that the embargo is lifted, some of my spoiler-free thoughts on what I think of the game so far. Now, I'll add that I've only played about 15 hours of the game up until this point. I haven't sunk in a huge amount of the story, but I've tried to play as much of a variety of the gameplay as I could. And then I'll give you my thoughts, some tips, some ideas that I have from what I've played of the game so far. Now I'll add this is not a scripted video, so I might jump around a bit and be a bit all over the place, but I just wanted it to be my general thoughts and feelings as of right now from what I've played of the game without spoiling any major plot points. And in terms of the gameplay, of course, you'll only see gameplay from the first 10 to 15 hours, and most of it will probably be free roam gameplay, and I'll avoid most story stuff as much as I can, other than maybe some of the pro early prologue time in Norway and a few little ideas of how some of the kingdom alliances are working throughout the story once you're in England. Let's start with overall, which is the, the game is pretty decent so far. The gameplay, it feels very much like an Origins Odyssey. Not too much has changed in terms of that. I'm not the biggest fan of the combat, but there is options in terms of stealth to optimize your experience. In fact, I'm going to have a video in the next few hours that I'll drop to give you guys tips on what to set your settings to, to make it feel like the most original AC sort of feel to when you're playing the game and free roaming the world. But when it comes to story, the story is fantastic. It's what I'd expect it to be with Darby McDevitt as the narrative director. There's so much to like about it in terms of the overarching storyline, in terms of Eivor's storyline, in terms of the Hidden One storyline. Straight away, the thing I liked the most was how the vibe of the Hidden Ones feels in this game and in this world and in this time period. That's what I like to see from Assassin's Creed games is to know what it's like to be an assassin in this time period. This game very early on gives you a vibe of how the Hidden Ones are seen by the world in this time period and how they operate and I am a big fan of how it's done and the interactions you have with them very early on. The modern day, I'm not going to say anything about it other than I feel very invested at least for this individual game. I'm not thinking about the future narrative, I'm not thinking about I wonder what happens next. All I'm thinking about is they've made a setup and I'm interested to see how it turns out and probably more interested than I've been since the Desmond games right now. At least that's how it's been written, that's my feelings to the setup right now, but whether it pays off or not, only time will tell until I finish the game. Those are my feelings without saying any specifics about what happens in the modern day. In terms of Eivor's storyline, it's actually very interesting. I played as female Eivor for most of what I've played through so far. I let the Animus decide, which so far has been exclusively female Eivor, and I've got some hints of how that works, but I don't actually know just yet, and of course, I'll let you guys play the game to find out why that is. I need to continue to play to find out why that is. I did switch to male Eivor because I was just really interested to see how that plays, and I'm currently I'm probably two, three hours into playing as male Eivor, and I'm enjoying both performances for different reasons, and sometimes it does feel like a bit of different characters, even though it's supposed to be one character, just in the way they're performed. In the way they act, of course, very similar, very consistent, but just in the performances, female and male Eivor tonally feel a bit different, and I really enjoy male Eivor right now, but that might just be because it's new, and I've only played a couple hours and a small amount of story with him, whereas female Eivor I liked a lot, but it's quite a different tone. I feel like female Eivor just performs very aggressively, not in a bad way, just in terms of a Viking way, and feels very almost arrogant in her abilities. The, something about the male Eivor performance, I almost feel like it's a bit more cool, calm, and collected, and it's just the way they speak. Maybe it's a voice thing, I'm not sure, but that's just what I've got from the performances so far between the two genders of Eivor. The settlement's a lot of fun. The problem I'm only having is I really wanted to spend time investing in that, but you've got to do a lot of story to open the map up, to open up more raids, so you can get the equipment necessary to be able to upgrade the settlement. But so far, I've done every raid that I can, at least in my area of power level. Now your power level being pretty much your level system. Yes, there's been talk that you could be any level and fight any power level, but it really is difficult to do. And the combat, to be honest, isn't all that great. I actually think it's worse than Origins and 
I don't even know, probably as good as Odyssey. It's a little different in terms of the pacing and the feel to Odyssey, but I don't think it's any better. They've made some adjustments to add that stamina bar to make it more challenging, but I don't think making a bad combat system more challenging makes it better. I just think it makes it differently bad. Uh, and when I say bad, I mostly mean boring. I don't get a lot of satisfaction out of using the combat system, and I try to avoid the abilities because I think they're quite silly and they feel quite out of place. There's a couple I like, like axe throwing or a flying knee. Those are a bit more realistic and just sort of flow into the combat better, but there's a few I'm just sort of avoiding at this stage of the game. When it comes to stealth, i found a way to optimize the way I like it. There's an easy setting. There's instant assassination. There's a few little things you can do to make it feel a bit more balanced because when I had the higher settings of the stealth, it just didn't feel quite right. It was just no fun at all. It was totally unforgiving and it made the stealth hard to figure out when it came to social stealth especially because you're just trying to walk quietly and wear a hood and be stealthy and it just never seemed to work. I feel like I've got the hang of it now. I've got it optimized to the settings I want. I'll go through that in another video as I said, but overall the stealth's Quite a bit of fun, especially with Instant Assassination. If you're an OG Assassin's Creed fan, that is a must to feel great when you're wandering through cities and infiltrating locations to get treasure or kill a target. Definitely recommend that setting for your stealth preferences. In terms of the open world, I really like the way they've done side activities. We talked about it a lot in the lead up to the game. In the differences between the way it's structured, each location you're not sure what you're going to get out of it. There's the blue markers for mysteries, which could be a small side quest encounter, which isn't a full side quest most of the time. They're just small encounters that keep you in the local area of where that quest is, and then you might get some ingredients to make an elixir and you have to go on a bear cave that's 100 meters away like there's there's not a whole lot of running around from place to place to place needing to fast travel for these encounters mostly when you run into them it's sort of in that small location it takes you five minutes and you might have a laugh out of it it doesn't progress Eivor's story it doesn't really progress the world but it's a fun little encounter and you get to know little bits of how the world and the people in that world operate what I really like is the way this game is paced in terms of the writing. Of course, you can take your time in between starting these story arcs because the way the story is structured is very much like the old Assassin's Creed sequences where you've got about two to three hour, not chapters, but story arcs or sagas as they're called in Valhalla. And they have their own sort of condensed small characters in them that I'm sure will sort of pay off at the end, similar to older Assassin's Creed games where in each sequence you've got a whole new story that progresses your main character's storyline and the goals you're trying to achieve. However, they've got their own individual side characters. You sort of get to know they have their own ambitions. You help them through their story arc and hopefully in the end of the game, they'll all come together. But again, I'm not sure yet. We're not up to that point. One small detail I really like about the writing is the way you learn about the world. I did have one moment where I was riding quite a long distance from one location to another during a story mission. And if I'm playing an Origins or an Odyssey, I just didn't see the consistent riding where during that riding period, you learnt a lot or got any interesting dialogue. But already a few times in Valhalla, the writing and the script is so good in terms of not just learning about Eivor, but the side characters are really good too. You learn how the different people, when it comes to the Danes or the Saxons, they work. You learn about the history there. You learn about the social structures. You learn about where these people came from. I really love the way it's done and it makes those mundane pieces of, of the gameplay actually really interesting with story and it's complemented and balanced really well. Again, like I said, the highlight so far of this game is the writing. Definitely by far the highlight of the game. I enjoy the characters a lot, whether you're playing as male or female Eivor. I enjoy the side characters, the modern day is interesting, the hidden ones and the way that operates interesting. There's a lot to like about the story. It just comes to the gameplay that I'm not that big of a fan of and the biggest thing is probably the combat that lets it down to me. I find it quite boring, which then sort of limits how much I enjoy Viking elements of the game, like the raids. The raid was good the first couple of times I did it, but then I really only do them to get resources for the settlement. Because the combat's not fun, the raids aren't necessarily all that fun to me either. I did enjoy my first siege that I got to play in the game, just because it adds a bit of variety for what you're doing in the combat, using a siege weapon, climbing siege ladders, uh, and dealing with all these different elements. It just makes it a little bit more exciting. Will I get over that the more I do? Perhaps, I just haven't done enough, whereas the raids, the first time I did it, was cool, and then it started to sort of become stale very quickly. 
Those are my thoughts there, and that's just purely because the combat doesn't hold up as well that I don't think those gameplay mechanics are that interesting to begin with just because they use the combat so much. When it comes to the rest of the story and gameplay, I try to use stealth. I find the stealth system way better, especially with instant assassinations, so if I can use stealth, I'm going to use stealth, but when you have things where it forces you to use combat, I'm not going to find that as interesting. I enjoy the encounters, I like exploring the world, it feels very similar to an Origins Odyssey in some ways, so it does feel like you're just going location, location, location mindlessly, but there's probably a lot more mysteries, I would say, than in previous games. Origins did have some really good ones, actually, and Valhalla does very similar. You could find a Hidden Ones Bureau, in fact, there's several scattered throughout the map, and I really liked finding the Codex pages in there, and reading and learning about the Hidden Ones and how they used to operate during the Roman Empire times when they occupied England. So as I've said, the game's pretty decent so far. I find that it runs very smooth on the PlayStation 4, which is what I'm playing on. I'm looking forward to playing it on the PS5 when I do get my copy for that. And I am looking forward to seeing if there's any graphical differences that are major enough to notice, as well as how smooth the game runs overall. Because, yeah, there are a few little dropouts here and there, but I actually haven't run into any massive problems or complete shutdowns of the game as of yet, and I haven't even got that day one patch, I believe. Maybe I've missed it, but I'm pretty sure I don't. So yeah, in terms of gameplay, feels like Origins and Odyssey uh, maybe a little better in some ways and maybe a little worse in other ways, so it's fine in that way. If you like those games, you'll probably like sort of how it plays. There's some things I like about that, there's some things I definitely don't like about that. But the story's strong, and to me that's the most important thing, and I'm really, really looking forward to finding out how the story progresses. The only thing is I would like to see more Hidden Ones elements of the story, yet the Kingdom alliances are pretty cool, and they have some unique characters in them, but that's not why I'm playing Assassin's Creed, so only time will tell how much of that's in the game, and whether there's a lot or a little bit, will probably depend on how strongly I enjoy the story, and whether it really pays off what they set up early in the game with Eivor, the Hidden Ones, and also the modern day. So, hopefully, that gives you a little bit of a vibe of how I feel about the game. Still very early days. I will do a full scripted review when I finish Valhalla, but this is my sort of free-flowing thoughts. I might have missed things, I might not have. It's just wanted to sit down and just record my voice, see what I had to say, see how I felt, and let you guys know, these are my thoughts, early on, spoiler free, about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I hope you enjoyed this video, there's going to be lots of content coming in the next couple of weeks, covering this game. I was going to do a stream series, because I didn't plan on even getting the game until the PS5, and then streaming my first playthrough, that sort of ruined, so I'll do some sort of funtage, free roam gameplay videos so you can see me while I'm playing, I'm sure I'll do some free roam streams here and there. But I'll do a lot of guides and tips and tricks and uh, some information videos, some theory videos, explanation videos on the ending perhaps, depending on how that all goes. And I'll definitely be covering this game heavily over the next month to two months, including on the As Always podcast, we'll do a spoiler cast of the Four Pillars. In a few weeks' time, the next episode coming this Monday, this Monday, next Monday, whenever it is, the this coming Monday, because it's Monday that I'm recording this, and James and I will cover over our spoiler-free thoughts of the game, and hopefully I'll be pretty close to finish by that point. So, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to our Patreon producers for making this video happen. I appreciate all your support. Head over to patreon.com forward slash, as always, for some bonus content. Thank you again so much for listening, and I will see you all next time.